Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Main Street Prowlers. <laughs> oh, you actually want some space today, huh? <laughs> well, um, I mean, I'm 6'5", 330. I don't have much space anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, today we have uh, Alex Gregorich on with us. Uh, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. <clears throat> um, it, it's quite interesting because um, you, you played more of like a coach kind of um, standpoint as of late, um, which is fine, but we want you back on the ISO, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, he wants to be back on the ice, but Joe's being Joe. <laughs> um, about that, though, um, being behind the scenes, what, what do you see more of that you could actually, like, that could help you actually with um, more on the ice yourself. Yeah, I mean, yeah, being able to watch the last few games, you get to uh, kind of just look from a different perspective as you would from on the bench. Uh, you get to see different systems work, how our guys are working, and uh, how you know how Columbus has been playing them a lot lately. Uh, not anytime soon again, but uh, being able to see like what they're doing and kind of just uh, you know relay the message to myself and to the guys you know when I can. Um, it's definitely worth it to have those, um, especially for the guys that are actually playing, to have those extra set of eyes as the bird's eye view, basically. Yeah, I mean, I hope, you know. <laughs> it's, either way, you're playing an important role, whether lacing the skates up or up in the sky. I mean, yeah, we're a team, so whether whether you're playing or whether you're, you know, behind the scenes, you know, you do what you can to help the team win. Exactly. Um now, playing as a team, um, you actually played with uh, Jared Pfeiffer um, back in at Indiana Tech. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, now, were you part of the uh, national championship team? Uh, yeah, so um, we both played there last year. We actually both started the program five years ago uh, together. So we played you know, the last five years together, and we went from freshman year to where we were awful. We were like 8 and 36 or something, and then... Ooh. And then we end our fifth year there together at 35 and three with uh, championships. So it's it's pretty cool, pretty definitely cool experience. That's an amazing turnout when you can go yeah. that far. Yeah, I mean we had a great coach Frank DeCristofaro, and we just uh, you know our school took care of us and everything fell into place. Exactly, and um, DeCristofaro is kind of a um, nice nice name to hear because Andy DeCristofaro. Um, they hail from the St. Clair Shores area, and yeah. he was our netminder for much of our first season. Yeah, Andy. So. Yeah, um, Andy Christopher. Yeah, he played here, and uh, yeah, he uh, was our assistant coach actually last year and uh, the year before. So he won the championship with us, and uh, he's actually the one that uh, got me to come up here. So, oh, nice. Yeah, he connected with Joe last year at the end of the season, and 
and here I am. So. And yeah. you were able to play three games with them last year. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> Great experience going through this year. Um, technically, you're still a rookie because of that, though. Yeah. But um, playing and getting your first three games out of the way, how does that <laughs> help you with the um, going on into the season, getting your more of your pro status out of the way? Well, yeah. I mean, so the biggest thing was like you're going into a new place after being in college for five years. So you're going to have new team, new teammates, you know, new coach. So going there and and really, uh, you know, get to practice for a few weeks and play those three games. I was able to create a bond and be comfortable here. So when I came in this year, I was you know just ready to go and had no worries other than just putting the product on the ice. Exactly. So that, that's always a plus, especially when you can bond with um, great players like Robo and um, a J. And yeah. It's. Don't it's good, Graham. True. We can't. We got to finish out the top line, right? Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> um, have those people take you under under their wing, though, is must feel nice. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's awesome having those guys that have such uh, experience. You know, Robo, five hundred uh, <coughs> professional games played, and all these other guys with experience, and guys mm-hmm. like Portillo and Chris Pauling and. All these guys that, you know, you see, you watch every day and their work ethic and their professionalism, and they kind of just, you know, guide you in the right direction. Exactly. Speaking, um, of, speaking of Graham, the obligatory plead the fifth question, who's a better coach? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Pace or Graham? No, they're both, they're both good coaches, so. I don't, I don't, yeah. Come on. You can't put them on the spot, right? <laughs> we, we always gotta pull them on the spot. Come we, on. We've done it every episode. Why? Why would we change it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Who's the better coach? I mean, I think they complement each other really well. They all they, they have different coaching styles. And, you know, they're they're different people, and they just they they match. So you know, it's it's good for the team. And that's exactly why Joe selected Mads because he could Matt could pick up in areas where Joe couldn't. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's in everywhere. Locker room, on the ice, and mm-hmm. everywhere. So. And Joe especially needed it last year with uh, doing all the marketing and all that himself. And being suspended about half the season. We don't talk about it. <laughs> we time for the marketing, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I need to um, do more marketing, so I'm going to uh, do this game. <laughs> so, like, like we tell everybody, too, his new nickname is Happy Gilmore. <laughs> yeah. Hi, uh, Kevin. Because of that. Uh, I'll be happy about you know, that one. Ca- Oh, <laughs> Kate Innocent. Oh. Yeah, I, don't, I still don't think he takes it. What? I didn't see it. I didn't Sabrina see it. Sabrina Oh, hello. So, what's up? Sabrina is um, official photographer for the Prowlers. So, you guys. And, uh, we got to give our, a regular shout out to our, our good buddy, uh, Kevin Samuels. Kevin. <laughs> hey, Kevin. So, it's um, the one that's always right in the corner. Yeah. So. Right on the ice class. Oh, Kevin? Yeah. Okay. All right. What's up, Tina? Send it When does Elmira face this? Um. Oh, my cousin's on. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my cousin Jared over there in Iowa. Oh. I appreciate you tuning in. Okay. Yeah, I said we already have over 50 viewers. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, we do, actually. Again, about so, um, 50% of them, or no, wait, about 10% of them are here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, okay. I, I want you to explain that comment that he made, the not so little cousin. Oh, well, I'm his little. He's older than me, so he's, I've always been his little cousin. And now I'm six two, two thirty, and I'm not so little anymore. <laughs> so well, it's, uh, it, it's a, it was the same thing with uh, my dad and his sisters. Yeah, he he's the baby of the family, but he's six foot eight and. They obviously weren't. Yeah, yeah. My little brother's <laughs> bigger than me, so I don't <coughs> oh, just call him my brother. Uh, okay. <laughs> when, when, when do we first play Elmira? Or we play Elmira next in January. 24th. 24th and 25th in Elmira. Oh, those are going to be fun games. I think we don't play Elmira. Wait. There. Have we played Elmira? No. no. They don't Not come yet. here this year. No. We play them there and that's it. Well, that's stupid. I think we can play them at a uh, neutral site too, maybe. Um, um, that, might, that might be. Uh, that's yeah. Columbus and. Um, In Bloomington. Uh, yeah, Colum- Columbus Bloomington. would be. Yeah, Columbus. I think that one's at University of Georgia at 
yes. arena. And then um, Danville is in Bloomington. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is going to be nice to have the um, that franchise back in the league. Yeah. He replies back as well, I, as I am at the rink with Jasper. Yeah. So my little cousin just started playing hockey this year, Te- and um, my cousin Jared right there started driving the Zamboni too. So technically, they taking it back up there. Crystal says we play them in our barn on the night. Huh? Oh. Thanks for the update, Crystal. February ninth. February ninth. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> At 3 p.m. Oh, afternoon game. Yeah, it's oh, a so Sunday. Sunday game. It's a Sunday oh, so yeah, Sunday. Sunday. Them and their stripper logo. We, we don't. Oh, wait, we can't say anything bad about Elmira either. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, the New York teams are immune to uh, being made fun of. Or pick up. East Coast and the team. Pick up. What difference is it? We're not picking on them, we're making fun of them. There, <laughs> if there's a difference, then there you go. <laughs> um, let's get back on track, guys. Though. Um, Wait, there's a track? Yes, <laughs> I was trying to lay one, and you guys kind of went <laughs> south. <laughs> I went north. <laughs> exactly my point. I think Bobby went east, and I went west. <laughs> so, well, I just noticed a comment here from uh, Thomas Baker. Uh, Asked if I played college hockey where I played, and uh, yeah, I played at Indiana Tech. Um, it was ACHA Division One my first two years, and then it went to uh, NAI Varsity Hockey there after that, and then they actually just went back to ACHA D- uh, Division One there this hey, year. Thanks so, for the question, Mr. Baker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a smart ass over here. If I didn't tell you already, I know this. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think the whole crew is full of them. Huh? Yeah. And the whole crew is Surra- full of them. Surrounded by them, I think. <laughs> well, we are the Easter Parade, so we're all smart asses. <laughs> but, um, some of us are just smarter than others. What? Is that, is that, is that a personal attack? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I yeah. just want to to figure out if it's a personal attack or not. I don't know. Is that Robert over here? <laughs> But, um, so, with the, something that we always also ask our guests, what is your favorite hockey movie? Favorite hockey movie? Mystery Alaska. Yes! Yeah, For once! the top. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a hockey fan, you haven't seen it, I'm it's not sure you're movie, a hockey It's a great movie, movie, but still Miracle <laughs> and then Slapshot. Slap, yeah, Miracle's a good souls. movie. I mean, yeah, we're American. Yeah, it was, it was a great movie. Yeah, Slapshot's Slap kind of also in that. Slapshot's good, yeah. If you're a hockey so, fan, so haven't so seen Young it. Blood. <laughs> Young Blood's a good one, too. Young Blood was really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, but for us old, old people sitting on the on this board, you know, it's like I said, Slapshot's from my right. time. So, so but, is Young Blood. Yeah. You've never seen it. Oh, I've seen it. Okay. Right. Right. But Mystery but, Alaska is about a small town team that tries to take out the NHL. Yes. Did so, they beat the New York Rangers? Them. Almost. No, they lost. Yeah, they lost. They ended up losing. Yeah. They lost. But they took on the Rangers. They gave them a good. They gave them a good fight. Yeah. Put it that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which tells you something. The Rangers suck. But. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sean Avery, now, it? next question is: How much difference is there with hockey? The hockey you play now and the college days. Oh, well, so it's uh, the difference in hockey. I'd say, I mean, the style is just different. So here it's more uh, strategy. It's more, you know, puck placement, uh, puck management, control the puck. And, you know, and there's, more, uh, and there's more scoring here, actually, too. But it seemed like in college it was more everyone was uh, more run and gun. There wasn't much strategy to it. There was more speed because guys were just running around. And then coming here, you know, you, everyone's in the right position. You know, it's different. You know, playing different systems, whether it's uh, you're playing zone in the uh, uh, and in the D zone, or if you're playing man on man. So that's really the big difference: is the, the system system work. Then, then uh, Crystal asks, uh, do you do anything in the summer to keep yourself conditioned for the hockey season? Oh well, I. Only played hockey for my whole life. 
We gotta get him talking. Yeah. So yeah, so I only play half. You can just be the person on the. Let well, him talk. And uh, so what I do during the summer is, well, I just kind of play hockey, work out, train, just like any other athlete. And then big outdoorsman, so I guess I do a lot of hiking, a lot of, a lot of canoeing and stuff like that, which keeps me going. Yeah. Uh, the, the outdoors is definitely a good conditioning thing. Oh, so. Just something different. You know, it yeah. just gets you out. And, you know, it's more than just a weight room around the ice. Exactly. And it, it keeps your legs more active. And that's exactly what you need to keep yourself... More sturdy and um, definitely um, get the stamina up. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. So it's good to do things differently, so your muscle groups just uh, you know grow and you know strengthen differently, and you're not just doing the same old stuff that they have to do. Exactly. So uh, just a quick plug: uh, we're at Big Boy for Grasha, and if you come down to Big Boy right now, we have tickets uh, that we're giving away to tomorrow's game. Against the Battle Creek Rumblebees. Come on out, guys. We'll Enjoy the good food. Crystal Lake. Uh, well, to continue on the before, to continue on that, we also have um, these actually really beautiful um, ornaments that they're selling right now for six bucks. That's um. Wow. That's actually. They have the. Um, yeah, the white one's nice. Yeah, yeah. it's. Mike can get it. He's going to take one over there. Do you have Okay, that's good. It's um, beautifully designed. It's um, They're selling it right at the front door, and it's only, like we said, it's only six bucks for four of them. And it's, no, um, no, 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 that's a piece. Oh, six bucks a piece? A I'm piece. sorry. I spoke wrong. But they're six bucks a piece. Either way, they're beautiful. Like, like I said, they're beautifully designed, and... Um, they're not just gonna get any cheap something off the um, wall, so. Right. And. Are they come in red and, and white. white. And he's got. He said he has more white ordered coming in soon. And that's uh, that seems like the most popular that they've been selling. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. As as you can see, it's um, it, the white one does definitely comes up more clear, but I have to say my personal favorite is the a, is the red and. It's a big red. Uh, you know? uh, <laughs> I, I like the white one a little better because it pops. Yeah, the, I agree. the logo pops a little more yeah. than the uh, gold yeah, the, on the red. Yeah, the gold on the red kind of hides itself, I think. For sure. <coughs> well, also the white one's a little more matte versus right. the shiny red one. Yeah. Jason said nice work, guys. Thanks, Jason. Where is he? He's in the back watching us. <laughs> Do your job, Jason. <laughs> Cook me some burgers. <laughs> Jason, you're coming on the show next. Don't worry. <laughs> um, let's get back to the crystals question then. Uh, Crystal said, what is something that us as fans don't know about you? <laughs> no, I'm sure there's a lot, but probably the one uh, the one big thing you guys don't know is uh, I, was, I was a Boy Scout. I got my Eagle Scout rank, so it's oh. probably... No one ever uh, thinks about that, you know. They mirror that with hockey players, so it's definitely I, something. I'm no also one would know. Oh, right on! <laughs> Congrats! Thanks. Congrats to you. Yeah, thank you. That's cool. So, you both went through a lot of years of um. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then uh, coasted afterward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I was 15 when I earned mine. You're 15, so I just turned 17 when I got mine. So. I um, I'm kind of embarrassed now. I quit after sixth grade. <laughs> I, no, nothing being, no, it's not for everybody. Yeah, to, to each their own. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got placed in a good troop, and my uh, family was real active in Cub Scouts, so that's how I got real, real into it. And I didn't get to do it. My brother did. I didn't get to do it, but I was a scout leader. Oh, there you go. So that's cool. Made it to life. Did scout yeah. life. Made it to life. Wow, that's he, that's good. Congrats. Because because of the way the rules were, he could have continued on to get Eagle, but, yeah. he, but he decided um, he didn't want to. Okay. Hey, yeah, way to get that far at least. Not many people do anymore. All right. Did, so. did you ever do uh, Mecca Island Service Troop? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. No. Oh. Uh, I did, uh, what, what exactly is that? Um, it's it's a basically go up to Mackinac Island for a week and order the governor's honor guard on the island. Oh, okay. No, I never did that. So oh, we, we did like high adventure camps and 
just like regular. We would travel like every summer. We went somewhere different, whether it was New York, West Virginia. Did all the scout camps out of state, other than Colt and Newbase here. So it was pretty. That's what that's what we did. I don't think I ever went to Colt and Newbase. Ah, it was nice. I did. I. I Thank you. I did rotary. Oh, I've been to rotary. Yeah. And uh, it was D bar A. Yeah. That's Dude. like the big one. Yeah. Can Am broke my ankle over there one time. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, so where was your troop based out of? Um, Royal Oak, Michigan. So I'm from Berkeley, just Metro Detroit, just about 45 minutes away from here. So it's, you, you, you know the area then. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not too familiar with it up here, uh, but, you know, familiar. Um, did you ever come through in Silver Six then? Uh, no, I actually played house hockey uh, until oh, yeah. I was a sophomore in high school. You actually missed a lot then at this so place. I didn't, yeah, I didn't play travel hockey at all, I and mean, then I just kind of got forced into playing double A hockey. You ever watched any of these kids play at this tournament? Yeah, I mean, I've been to Silver Stakes and seen it. I just never played in it. Uh, and then I played, yeah, my, the, the Silver Stakes I was at was not in Port Hero. Yeah, I, uh, I do uh, penalty box and um, gold judging. Oh, cool. You so, just love, you love the game. I'm to go oh, yes. to a commercial break. Hey, this will be my, my 11th year, I think. Really? Not... That's cool, man. Good for you. Um, so, what, what was your favorite Boy Scout camp then? Favorite Boy Scout camp? Uh, <laughs> uh, camp Sholkoff in upstate New York. So we went out there, and on the way there, we stopped and did a whitewater rafting in the New River Gorge in West Virginia, and then we went up to upstate New York. And I, I loved it. It was just a really good. It just had a lot of mosquitoes. Right. Yeah. But other than that, this is probably my favorite camp I've been to. So, yeah. <laughs> um, on that note, we'll be right back after these commercial breaks. Hey guys, it's Crystal from the Port Huron Prowlers. Back to you from behind the scenes. I'm with Mitz today, and Mitz and I are here to give you guys some um, examples of things the guys would like on the bus trip. Mitz, do you think the guys would like granola bars? What about fruit and vegetables? Okay, not vegetables, but how about fruit? Um, cases of water? What about some Powerade and Gatorade? Well, there you have it. Some true facts of what Mitz thinks our boys should have on the road trips. Thanks for watching and enjoy the show.
Border City Paranormal is a professional paranormal team located in the Blue Water area. If you have any uneasy feelings, hear bumps in the night that cannot be explained, or hear rumors about your home or business, please give us a call. Jason said, Jason said he's going to be on the show next week, so. Okay. But we won't be here next week. That is true. We'll be here on the New Year's Eve episode. Uh, uh, welcome back, guys. Um, we were actually just talking about what our favorite show was, because that last commercial that was just showing actually brought up a lot of stuff. So, um, what what is your favorite show that? Yeah. So, uh, favorite TV show? I'm kind of stuck right now. I'm, I'm a Ghost Hunters fan. Uh, huge into the paranormal. I'd like to. You know, start investigating. You know, Jared Pfeiffer and I, we've been watching it in the house. We're roommates, so uh, we're kind of addicted to it right now. So, yeah. And then I uh, saw the commercial for the Paranormal City and Border City and got real interested in that. So That's, that's amazing when something local like that comes around, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. Maybe you can join them on an investigation whenever the next one happens. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's do it. <laughs> We do have a Mount Pleasant um, thing to schedule, so I might as well. Yeah. Hey, let's. <laughs> me and Jared will come. <laughs> he might not be happy about it, but I just, I just offered it up. So he's coming. <laughs> he, he, you just volunteered him. Yeah. <laughs> it might as well, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Which he should be watching the show along with all your teammates, but they're probably too busy. <laughs> I'm sure uh, they might have one or two. I know Matt Graham was on earlier, so we'll see. Yeah. We, got, we got a couple more questions coming in. Uh, big boys from Fort Crash, Alex. What is your favorite NHL team? Oh, I'm a Red Wings fan through and through. But uh, uh, other than Red Wings, yeah, I grew up being a Detroit Red Wings fan. And, you know, uh, 25 straight years of playoffs, and then going through all this right now is tough. But you know, um, if I, I my time. yeah. Hey, I trust it. I trust it. They're they're exciting. Zadina's playing well, mm. and you know, Crystal I'm Wager. interested in this Comrie guy and in, in that. Crystal Wagner asks, what do you like most about the position you play? Uh, I mean, playing forward, you know, obviously you can score goals, but I'm not a big goal scorer. Hopefully this uh, Prowler, Main Street Prowler bump will help me out tomorrow. Week, but, uh, you know, I like to go in and hit and make plays. You know, I'm a forward, left wing and center, so be the first one in on the forecheck and, you know, make the initial hit, move the puck, you know, create space for the guys like Featherly and Pfeiffer. And, and uh, you know, Robo, Jay, all those goal scorers. So, yeah, he's really showing to be a goal, um, goal scorer lately. Yeah, yeah he's a good player. He's starting to heat up like he should. <laughs> uh, I'm not surprised one bit. You don't um, have to create much space for him. Pfeiffer <laughs> yeah, says he's down to, for the paranormal stuff. Yep, he's in. Yes. See? Thank you, Pfeiffer. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's funny because last week, you were supposed to come on, but unfortunately the circumstances came. Yeah, unfortunately. I, yeah, I, I had to work. I had to work late. I had a project I had to get done, so yeah. I wasn't but, um, able to make it. Um, Jeremy was actually telling me that how um, it's funny seeing you hit when you're on the road. Because um, it, it's just you like to take the body more, up, more in the open ice. Oh, is that true? I mean, I don't... <laughs> I don't know this. I like, you know, when there's an opportunity, I like to hit. So It's just when you're on the road, it's more open than when you take the body out at home. And really? Well, there's, there's, there's a difference? <laughs> there's a 15 inch, there's 15 extra feet of space when on the road. True. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that could help. That could make a difference, too. And, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't so, know. I guess we play, might, might play a little different game on the road, just depending. Yeah, I know. I I'm not, I never noticed that. Didn't think about it. <laughs> so how does playing at McMoran uh, help playing on the road? Be obviously you kind of have to make quicker decisions with the puck at home. Well, I mean, honestly, I you know the rinks. Every rink's different. So McMoran, you know, is older. You know, the puck bounces differently on our boards and comes off the wall differently. And 
you know, our ice is different. So everywhere we go, like, you know, we go to Watertown, their ice is super hard and fast. It's, it's different and a little bit tighter than ours. I'll tell you what, though, the, the the pure, pure, when you talk about the bounce off the boards, um, those are actually newer boards compared to what we had about, what, five years ago? Wow. We Two and a half years ago. We had ago. wooden boards. Still. No. It was... Oh, that actually been cool. No, we, we got the new boards. Uh, During the Falcons. Mm. During the Falcons. No, after, after the Falcons left town. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought it was during the Falcons in the mid-season. Oh, was, no, it was. Because they picked them up from Pennsylvania. Maybe it was, but I thought I thought they installed them after the Falcons. So, no, it was mid-season. Yeah, they're lively we switched regardless. Over. So that's... Yeah, because even our penalty boxes were two different. They were... At, you had separate boxes. They were not... You had to actually... Your um, penalty box workers had to come up on the ice and go into the box. But the thing about that was, though, that um, it was the old setup where you only had a, one penalty box back in the olden days for the away team, while the home team took their penalties in their own bench. Yes. So that home team penalty box was an add-on, I want to say like the second or third year of the Border Catch, which was 97 or 98 or something we, like that. We, we were so young we forget. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Dana remembers, but... Yeah. <laughs> but I remember going to the games where it's like, I would think, didn't that player get a penalty? He's sitting on the bench. <laughs> well, ever since I've been going, they've had the two wooden boxes, yeah. and the bouncers actually sat in between. There was not a box around the, the, the right. scorekeeper and all that, and the clock and, keeper. And one of the doors opened the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Used to, but... They, all the years I've been in, they they had them going no, the right direction, well, but with the wooden boards, they there were I forget if it, I think it might have been um, the away box. The door opened the wrong way. I don't know. All I know is they pulled in where, you know. Right, they, right. But I think you're right. One open to the left, one open to the right, or whatever. And uh, no, however, they they both open the same, same way. way. It's just yeah, yeah. I got stepped on many times. People going back out on the ice, yeah. you know. On the one door, because no. you stand on the road. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> get a skate across yeah. your toes. Yeah, you don't want that, that's for uh, sure. <laughs> big boys before class, crash it ass. Alex, what are you asking for Santa this year? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't really, I haven't really thought about it. I needed anything. I'm, Playing time? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right? <laughs> I, I think we need to take that up with uh, Santa Joe, right? Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> or or uh, Elf Grimm. <laughs> right? Uh, no, I'd probably ask for a new fishing pole or golf clubs. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. That, that'd be nice. Yeah. Um, um, you did forget about Jason's comment, though, too. What, that he's going to be on the show next week? No. <laughs> his movie. Favorite well, Christmas yeah. movie. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, I think your brother has best hockey memory. Oh, that's my brother. Yeah, Zach. What's up, dude? Uh, favorite hockey memory was, I mean, all the ones as a little kid skating in my backyard. You know, those are great memories, and you know, just playing all the kid like all, all my buddies growing up. But I went in the championship last year with Indiana Tech. That's something I'll you know, never forget. That you always want to do. It's part of, part of my dream. So mm-hmm. I'd be able to accomplish that. Uh, <laughs> Mom. Um, he's giggling. A over there. He, he's just being a smart ass again. Oh, I'm surrounded by <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, so being a rookie, do you get any special treatment or do you have a lot of chores? Uh, no, there's no one has any special treatment. Uh, you know, we all, you know, we all have chores, we all rotate each week. Um, so yeah, there's no special treatment, just just the rookie treatment. That's all. Uh, Crystal said the home team was on the penalty box side, and the penalty box was on the other side. Of only one box. Uh, See, told you. <laughs> but, um, again, I say you forgot Jason's comment. Which one? Favorite Christmas oh, Fra- movie? Jason said favorite Christmas time movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's tough. Probably, uh, oh, actually, I, the cartoon movie, A Year Without a Santa Claus. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. that's just tradition growing up in my house. Yeah. Watch that every year. You'll shoot your eye out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Come on. That's always top. And then Home Alone. So, like I said, there's so many good ones. Um, What's this? Zach asked, uh, player you always wanted to play like? Man, he's got a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're, and we're, we're, we're thankful for all the questions. Yeah. Yes. No, thanks, Zach, again. Favorite, like, player I want to play like or, like, imitated my game. I was like just an abdicator on the Red Wings. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'd like to think I'd play like him, but Thomas Holmstrom <coughs> growing up, sitting there. You know, I've always been a big guy, so I'd sit oh, in front yeah. of the net. Pavel. I mean, Pavel, that's it. You're like, come on. I can't. I don't know if um, like that. Nobody there, can there's that. not yeah, too there's many people who can model their game after Pavel yeah. Tatsuk. No, no. That's, you know, I like Thomas Holmstrom. You know, he was gritty and just the abdicator came right out. And they both made their office in front of the net, so... Big bodies that played physical. Um, Can answer our right, uh, <laughs> Kevin want no. Kevin wants to say hi to you. Oh, RC, good answer. <laughs> who's saying who's saying hi? Kevin. 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 Kevin Samuelson. Hello, Samuelson. Hello, Kevin. <laughs> um. Is he messaging you, you or? Yes, he is. <laughs> um. So when you. So when the call, shoot check, what does that mean? Uh, shoot check, so uh, when we just go out as a team, you know, uh, for team meals and stuff, you uh, just got to be aware, you know, there could be a little slippery snake, putting a little ketchup or something on your shoe, and then they yell, <laughs> shoe check, and, and everyone checks their shoe, and you're the one with, you know, whatever they put on your shoe, you got to stand up and sing in front of the whole restaurant, so, <laughs> yeah, that happened to me, uh, Last road trip, Ooh. or was it two road trips ago? I forget. I forget. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind singing. I like karaoke. I haven't gone out yet up here in Port Huron, but well, Lynch's Lynch's karaoke night. Yeah, I heard that. One day I'll make it. <laughs> so, um, what's your favorite rink that you've played in? In this in this league so far, or, or all time? Just all general. favorite rink. Yeah. Well, I played a championship game on the Joe Lewis Arena and won and scored. Oh. So, yeah, that's that was pretty cool. Um, but I was young. I was like 13 uh, <laughs> when I did that. But, yeah, that was really cool was for that. But favorite rink, uh, playing in college, we played at Waldorf, and they had a really old school wooden barn. <laughs> And kind of like, if, uh, well, Shattuck St. Mary's, when I played AAA, we played the prep team there, and it uh, didn't turn out too good. They, they whooped us, but they had the old barn that they that they used, and huh? I think it was the Mighty Ducks. Okay. So, okay. yeah, it was really, really cool, um, cool history there. Your brother asked, most embarrassing moment. In hockey? <laughs> It does say, yeah, hockey moment. Hockey <laughs> moment? Good. You know. Most embarrassing hockey moment. Um, <laughs> well, there's been a couple, but... Uh, when I played junior for Central Wisconsin, we were playing the Ileana Blackbirds in the Minnesota Junior Hockey League, and I uh, I was like two for two in shootouts so far that year. So I was going, I think I was the second shooter, and I went down and did a leg kick and went usually shoot low blocker. Well, it just popped up on me, and the puck went straight sideways. And there's a picture of the puck in the far corner, like I just dumped and changed it. <laughs> and, you know, my, yeah, it's just, it was bad. I put the point, like, the puck straight into the corner. Can't, the, the boys haven't, you know, can't ever I still be get reminded about that. Can't ever be worse than Dennis Weidman when, when he went in and, and he <laughs> fell in the flew, flew into the yeah. corner. Yeah. <laughs> Crystal says sink. Sink? No, I'm going to pass on that. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal, why don't you sing? No, thank you. Well, she's not yeah, here on. to sing to us, so yeah. it'll be fine. <laughs> Um, I guess, um, what would be your, um, what would be the arena that you hate the most playing in? Um, that's tough. There's been a few. I didn't, honestly, I didn't like playing at Menor when we were there. Uh, I don't know, just, I had a weird atmosphere, weird feeling to me, but, mm-hmm. um, so, Joe, don't play him on the 27th or 28th. No. no. <laughs> I just didn't. No, I just, oh, just didn't. Don't like their, I don't know. 
<laughs> they have some weird fans down there. Um, it's just different. Uh, we all have. Every ring has its weird uh, fans. Uh, every team has <laughs> weird fans, Chris. I mean. Come on, we're see our rowdies. I'm are, sitting next are, to the weird one right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you got blind referee running around, and you know. I think my least favorite ever playing was Fraser Iceland. Maybe he has a or Fraser yes. Hockey Land. We, we've, oh, yeah. heard, we've been yeah, here. We heard a lot of about that over the cold. summer. They're oh. trying to get a team. Yeah, in. Oh, they try every. No comment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially we don't talk about that league. Yeah. Well, Especially yeah. with what was just announced today. So what was that? Um. They say they're not reorganizing, but it's like a reorganization. Um, coming back. Um, oh, Michigan, God, no. the, the Michigan Mike. Independence Professional Hockey League, or whatever. If, it, if a new league were to form, I'd like to see it be like a summer league like that, East Side of League. Yeah. No. yeah. I, I, see, my thing is, like, I, you know, I, I love hockey. If it's put together properly, I'd love to see it to help, you know, other players get to play that aren't getting to play. But it's got to be organized properly this time. The, the, the show went off the rails really early. Yes, it did. I mean, I don't know enough about it. I know a few of my buddies were trying to play, and they're some of the players that got you know screwed over. So yeah. just hope that doesn't happen to the to the players going into this one. Right. It's going to be more it's supposedly more owner oriented, I guess. So hopefully that works out for them. Yeah. Good luck. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um. Right, let's just get off that um, source. Yeah. Let's yeah. get back to <laughs> real hockey. So, uh, um, who's your fri- favorite teammate to play with? Uh, I mean, I played with Jared for six years, but oh, he's also like one of my best friends. So I, he also makes me mad the most. To <laughs> be really honest, I'd say Portillo. You know, it's. I mean, I. When I'm, when I'm in the lineup, on the line with him, and you know we're big bodies, we just go in there and play physical and find, you know, get him the puck, and he's been scoring, mm-hmm. so get definitely get him the puck. So <laughs> yeah, between him and Federley, that's that's like the best. Like it's like Federley has bodyguards when he plays <laughs> with yeah. Alex and Justin Portillo. <laughs> definitely with Ports, you know, Ports is uh, Ports is the protector, that's for sure. You know. I, Fats isn't going. If, if Ports is there, Fats is, Fats is fine. Yeah. Um, talk about bringing out the big guns. I actually do want to play a video right now of a person that I didn't think would actually fight, but actually fought during Friday's game. David Nipper? Yes. Let's let's bring that up. It's because it was only, like, what, eight seconds into the game. Man. Yeah. Eight seconds work Friday. But that, that's... Hey, dog. Beat his ass. Answering the bell and to to chase Fallis, their captain, and you know Nipper, you know, doing his thing. It was it was good to see. He definitely, yeah, he definitely killed it. And it's um, it looked like a great fight too. It's, I unfortunately wasn't able to make it that night, but and that that, that video though was a great a great footage. Yeah, it's, yeah. So, especially from uh, it came from our own uh, Robert Bohovic down there. Yeah. <laughs> From Canada or Newfoundland too? No, no, he was. He happened to. He records all the fights. Oh, oh, I gotcha. I thought you were saying he was. No, he goes. He, he likes. To, he'll go live um, during the fights and stuff. Okay, ah, that's cool. Um, it's great to see someone backing up their team, though. That's yeah. That's you know, guys, you gotta do it sometimes. Fighting, yeah. fighting's needed. I don't know if you saw the Drew Doughty clip, but. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You know, he he said it perfectly. So and then, and then, then they had a feature of it on, uh, I think Fox Sports Detroit when they played the Kings, who unfortunately beat the Red Wings thanks to a hometown uh, goalie uh, Jack Campbell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All um, right. But yeah, two questions for him. 
First one's from Crystal. So what is your favorite food for Christmas? I like all food. Come on. <laughs> you seen me? I didn't get 6-2-2-30 for, without that. <laughs> uh, favorite Christmas food. Well, my mom makes so many cookies. And then my grandma's cooking. You know, there's, I don't know. Uh, that's tough. All of it. Yeah, all of it. All of it. I don't have a favorite. I honestly don't. It's like Thanksgiving. I don't have a favorite Thanksgiving food. Probably pumpkin pie if I had to guess, but Christmas, that's tough. I don't I actually don't have an answer for that. That's sorry, one sorry one Crystal. Weird. weird holidays where you can just eat anything. Yeah. Well it depends on your health and stuff, so we're not asking you. Okay, let's get this question <laughs> before commercial break. Your brother asks hunting professionally or hockey professionally? You can do both. You can <laughs> definitely do both. Just but yeah, hockey professionally. You know, I'm doing it, I'm doing it now. I want to continue doing it and hunt when I can. And then when hockey is, uh, you know, there's always a day where hockey comes to an end, and then hunting will take over there. Okay. So it's um time for another commercial. Yeah, we'll be right back after these messages. And then we gotta advertise this. Hey guys, it's Crystal from the Port Heron Prowlers. Back to you from behind the scenes. I'm with Mitz today, and Mitz and I are here to give you guys some um, examples of things the guys would like on the bus trip. Mitz, do you think the guys would like granola bars? What about fruit and vegetables? Okay, not vegetables, but how about fruit? Um, cases of water? What about some Powerade and Gatorade? Well, there you have it. Some true facts of what Mitz thinks our boys should have on the road trips. Thanks for watching and enjoy the show. At Big Boy, we've got lots of omelets all day, every day. Like the meaty meat lovers, savory southern, or hearty Denver. It's your big boy. Border City Paranormal is a professional paranormal team located in the Blue Water area. If you have any uneasy feelings, hear bumps in the night that cannot be explained, or hear rumors about your home or business, please give us a call.
and welcome back from Big Boy and Fort Gratiot, where the uh, specials are what, Chris? Uh, seven ninety nine for the Big Boy combo, which is actually really good right now. And isn't there a uh, fifteen percent off uh, for family and friends when you spend twenty dollars, Chris? Exactly. It, you have to spend twenty dollars, but hey, that's a lot of food. It gets you a lot of stuff that you want. Um, you, yeah. it, it's it's stuff that it's it's essentially everything on the menu. Get your pies. Those pies are amazing, guys. Come on. Have you eaten here yet? Oh yeah, I've eaten big boy. Yeah, a few times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <coughs> good, good food, cheap meal. Yep. I just had that four cheese mac and cheese too here. That's actually pretty amazing. Hey, chicken strips are really good here. Yeah. I might get the big boy combo to go. Actually, that mm. sounds good. I know, right? <laughs> we're, um, lo- we're losing our customer base here uh, in terms of. Who's going to show up and uh, get these free tickets for tomorrow? We do have three. Come on, guys. <laughs> um, we do um, have the highlights of both games from this weekend, though. We do want to play. Yeah. So let's, Which included one shootout. A, sh- a shutout. Sorry, guys. Shutout. <laughs> shootout. I'm trying to send us into overtime, so it's like... <laughs> we don't want overtime. We don't want overtime. <laughs> But, um, we want, we want you don't shutouts, get, you don't get three points for Right. So here we go. Somebody with the puck, but he turns it over. Graham with it behind the net. Out in front to Portillo, shoots and scores. Justin Portillo with the power play goal. He's hot, and he puts the Prowlers up one to nothing here at McMoran Arena. Puck gets away from Farmer to Federley. Federley picks it off and shot down and scores. What a shot from Austin Federley, the Port Huron native. He puts the Prowlers up two to nothing. Bonarenko comes away with it. As he will give it over to Howie. Howie can't control that one off his stick. Gives it over to Krupp. Krupp a pass there to the slot is picked up by Dalton Jay. And off he goes through the neutral zone. As Zolcanic. <coughs> Jay coming in. Rutledge and it's deflected in by Zach Zolcanic. The Prowlers with a short-handed goal. And it's three to nothing, Port Huron. Parsons has time to get it out, and he does. Eight seconds remaining over to Fallis. Fallis loses it as it's poached by Robertson. Three seconds remaining. Wyatt Trumbley with it, trying to get it down to Simon. Simon six away, and that is three points for your Port Huron Prowlers. They take down the Columbus River Dragons by a score of three to two and a nail biter of a third period. They will take a Friday night win, three points tonight and they will look for another three points tomorrow gets it over to robertson robertson has it throws it down into the corner robertson looking to get it up that is or not or not with a nice little sauce pass over gets to robertson robertson no two guys went to block it there for the river jakes gets it in the middle cram shoots and he scores finally there we go the teddy bears will fly out of the ice matt to matt and joe pace catches a teddy bear oh it was a matter of time jeremy and now we finally have the first goal of the night. The Dragons asking from the bench, trying to get it out of the zone, but it will not. It's all Cannon takes it. He has to move in front, shoots off the pad. Federally shoots, and he scores! Goes top show. Austin Federally scores for the second night in a row. The power play strikes again. Two nothing Prowlers. And now Hayes trying to bring it up. Hashtag starting to go out of the net. They go another way. Don't change. The shot, and he scores! Dalton Jay, it was a matter of time. And finally, with a buck 05 to go, Dalton Jay roots it. Oh, finally, Jeremy. Finally. All academic here in the last 13 seconds as Paul throws it around. Santa Paul has it. Knocked off by Robertson. Eight seconds to go. Off the pad of Poland. Tremblay has it now. Five seconds left to go. Prowlers are about to take their first weekend sweep as the time runs out. Chris Poland gets the shutout. Dalton Jay scores. Austin Federley scores. Oh, it's been a great weekend. Jeremy and the Prowlers take it 3 nothing. And we're back. So we do have one question that you guys want to ask. Favorite go-to comfort food from Sabrina. Ooh, I'm not sure what comfort food means, but I'm going to say double stuffed Oreos. So, yeah, I guess I could eat a whole box of those. You it, it, it was uh, addicted to them. The, the Falcons' first season was 6 46 and 3. I had the 6 Say 6 46 and, and three. 3. Yeah. <laughs> what he's talking about is the Rumblebee's um, Being record 18. Yes. Yeah. Which is. Um, 
Something that you guys didn't hear while you were guys watching the highlights. And then, <laughs> and then the next year we went. The Falcons went 38-19-1 and won the division. Anyways, back on the topic. <laughs> it's still hockey. Back on the topic. <laughs> yeah, because we got to start our stats too soon. Um, it's already 8 o'clock. Now I lost my train of thought. Thanks, Mike. But, yeah, the answer to the question was double stuff Oreos. Oh, yeah. Thank it was, you. Uh, my favorite comfort food. You can't uh, – actually, Jerry and I bought two more bags today. Jared's oh. idea, though, so it's not my idea. <laughs> Blame him. <laughs> Okay, I now, always blame Jim. Now on to stats. So, uh, Friday, 3-2 win for the Prowlers. Uh, obviously, we have already covered, we, we saw the highlights, and we already covered the fight in that game. But uh, first goal for the Prowlers uh, was at the 148 mark of the first period, and that was uh, from Justin Portillo, and that was assisted by the Matt Twins, Brandon Robertson. And then uh, Austin Federley uh, put up, put the Prowlers up two nothing at the 5:49 mark of the first period, and on an assist from Dalton Young. And then uh, Zachary Zelkanich short-handed uh, with the game-winning goal at the 13:34 mark of the second, and that was assisted by Dalton J. And then uh, Columbus's goals came from former Prowler Gianni Liarakos, and his first one was assisted by Rich Sledy, who uh, was just released on waivers. And then his second one was assisted by uh, Tim uh, Santopolo and uh, C.J. Hayes. Or Thank you, Santa Paolo. Santa Paolo. Yeah. Santa Paolo. yeah. <laughs> short, so short, short guy, long name. And then obvi- obviously the ponies, uh, David Nipper, the David Nipper fight put uh, the Prowlers over uh, 200 pony minutes on the year. And then he fought Chase Fallis. Uh, then Dylan Farmer had an interference call at the one. 41 mark of the first, and that then Portion's first goal was obviously on the power play. I misread that. <laughs> and then uh, Paul Arnott uh, hooked a guy uh, at the four minute mark of the first, and then 41 seconds later, Yanni Leo Rocos lost his head and cross checked a guy and then yelled at the ref. I think I wasn't at the game. Yeah, yeah he got kind of for. Um, Abuse of an official? Uh, it wow. just says on Sportsman like Hyundai, because I thought abuse of an official was 10 was, or a game. Was that the They, they re-classified re, uh, it, because it, it was announced as abuse of an official. Oh. What was that, a federally? No, um, Yanni yeah. Rocco oh, on yeah. Friday. Yeah, was, yes. It was announced as abuse of an official. That's what we thought, too. You know, how was that? It only come up as a two-minute. Right. So, you know, we're like, well, isn't that normally 10 minutes for an abuse of an official? Yeah. Yeah. So. At least it's not Watertown. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, Justin Giuliano slashed to slash somebody, and then uh, Jay Crew got a stick a little too high, and then Jonathan Evans shot the puck over the glass. I presume because that's how you get to lay a game anymore. No. Um. Like actually, that. that when I think it was the closest hand on the puck. Oh. I there was one for closing the hand on the puck that was delayed a game, and then there was also one that was shut out. But which one was it? I don't remember. But there that, was a delay a game for the closing uh, hand on the puck. That was Friday. Saturday. At, at, or, well, I thought Saturday was a closing the hand on yes. the puck. Yeah. 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 And then um, Joe, Joe Pace with a hooking minor, Rich Letty cross-checking, Paul Arnott tripped somebody. Larry uh, slash somebody, and then Ivan Bondarenko cross check somebody. Crystal Sales abuse an official. Two minutes. Gene was feeling nice. <laughs> well, Paul Gene had a little sensitivity issue all weekend, so. <laughs> On Friday night, he was being really cool. It, 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 between Friday night and well, then it Saturday, it just seemed like a totally different. Well, situation. You text probably the senior official. Over so, Gene, and then um, Gene was the senior official on Saturday. 
But the attendance that night was uh, nine twenty-five. Gene is the director of the officials, so that'd put him. Is he? Yes. Um, and then Hugh Tech's gonna be the director of officials. I think it'll be different uh, each game. Yeah, uh, trial doesn't mean Gene will always be number one. But I could be wrong. I just know that's right. how some of the college reps were. Uh, and then, then trials had ref and, was and Hugh Tech's gonna be the head of officials for the new roller hockey league. Yep. Are you gonna try out for that league? I played three on three outdoor roller hockey as a kid growing up, but I haven't I haven't played roller hockey in years. So maybe I don't know. I'll think about it. Hey, we, something to think about. We did interview yeah. Jeff Blum last week. He is regular at the um, yeah. arena, so yeah, I did. Uh, I, I tuned in a little bit last week, saw that. So so much easier just doing this. I was already up on the screen, dude. <laughs> no, Crystal's- it wasn't. Crystal said Paul not, Gene is the Not Saturdays. Of, you had Fridays. The FPHO, <laughs> the officials. <laughs> yeah, we knew that. Who was the head that night? There we go. That's what we were talking about. It's not always the same. Thing there we are. And, this, and then we have Saturday's game, which was the teddy bear toss night. And uh, what else? Yeah. Special was special Torch, the, special on decks yep. and Torch Ryan. Law, law enforcement and law enforcement. Yep. Yeah, and that was a six p.m. start, so that was a early the earliest game played so far until yeah. we play till the Prowlers Sunday. play Saturday uh, or, Sunday. or Sunday at three, which is hasn't That'd changed. Well, so, three's o'clock better than what it used to be on Sundays because you know. Not? It used to be, you know, right. one o'clock, and a lot of people w- weren't coming because they go to church. Right. You know? I remember that it was like at eleven. That's I even worse. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Playing so three, three with ten o'clock start in junior year was tough. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Saturday, uh, there was no scoring in the first period. There, there were some chances, but a lot of good chances too. Uh, but both both goalies. Uh, Made every save in the first period, and then, uh, well, the first 30 minutes of the game, they made every save, and then at the 11:07 mark, on the power play in the second period, the uh, 2019 Port Huron Prowlers Teddy, Bo- Teddy Bear Toss goal was scored by Matt Graham, and that was assisted by Matt Robertson and David Nippard. Oh, they finally added the assist on Jay's goal. <laughs> my dad, my my dad was kind of complaining about that because so then at the seven sixteen mark, also on the power play in the third period, Austin Federally gave the Prowlers a two nothing lead, and that was assisted by Zachary Zelkanich, and then. With a minute five left in the game, Dalton Jay made it three nothing Prowlers on assist from Paul Arna and Austin Federley. And if you had looked Sunday, it was unassisted. Somebody, one of the office officials, finally came to their senses. Well, essentially, that gives yeah. See, it gives um, Paul and the shutout, which is. Yeah. I believe his first of the year. So Yeah, I think yeah, it was first of the year. He, you know, he's been playing good. Been playing real good, real solid. Just haven't, uh, you know, had the best turnout until, you know, last game. And then he was just on fire. And, you know, he really helped the boys out and backed us up. And, and you know, our goal scorers able to put the puck in the net. I know both Chris and Corey have shutouts this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is kind of weird. We played mainly Columbus, but they're – both at home against two different teams. Yeah. <laughs> so. And I believe uh, with the win on Saturday or Friday, I forget which one, they gave us the season series over Columbus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's what, two, three games left, something like that. Something like that, yeah. Anyway, uh, so 33 seconds into the game, both Brian Parsons and Jonathan Evans. Uh, got two minutes slashing minors. Then uh, at the 639 mark of the first, Justin Portillo tried to beat somebody up. I, I think it was Rich Letty who tried to beat up. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And Which is kind of weird because he, he could have gotten a lot worse. Yeah. Because he was literally pounding him into the ground. 
I don't know. I'm glad he was asking for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he was asking for it, but he went after him to start. And, I see and Jason has finally come out and stop <laughs> watching the show to do some cleaning. Yeah. But um, Lenny was asking for it, but uh, he just didn't want to follow through. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then at the 16:03 mark, Joe Pace <coughs> delay game for shooting the puck over the glass. Which, if I'm not mistaken, that was that one we up there felt was questionable because where he shot it from going out. No, I thought that was a later one. I didn't know it was in the third. Yeah, that. Okay. I, I think that. I think that was a story one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That was a story one. Yeah. And then uh, at the 19:23 mark, Joe Pace went back to the box for interfering with somebody. And then at the 5.30 mark, uh, Chad Heron uh, got a two-minute hooking minor. At the 6.10 mark of the second period, the 5.30 mark of the second period for Chad Heron. 6.10 mark of the second period, Arnott cro- got two for cross-checking. And then at the 9.47 mark, Ivan uh, Bondarenko, two minutes for closing his hand on the puck. I believe that came off a face-off, right? Yes. Um... Then at the 14.39 mark, uh, Matt Graham, two minutes are tripping. Then at the 19.34 mark, Austin Farrell, you got two for hooking and then two for insulting Paul Jean. (laughs) But that was was a really questionable call on Jean, though. And that's understandable why he was yelling at Jean. It it was funny because you you watch Federal, or you watch the play, you see Paul Jean's hand go up and then Fellers arguing with him while play's still going on. <laughs> <laughs> Just hold, holding him, I, I forget who it was, were battling for the, for the puck, and there was another Prowlers player. I think Zach was, on, was next to him. Yeah, they were battling to get control of the puck to get the pony. You just see <laughs> Austin just yelling at Paul Gene and questioning why he was being called. <laughs> But Austin's that kind of person, though. Yeah. <laughs> he does what he wants when he wants. <laughs> oh, right. yeah, he's a firecracker. Good <laughs> wild <laughs> album. <laughs> the, then at the uh, 546 mark, Chase Fallis, two minutes for shooting the puck over the glass. Um, then Austin Fairley at the 1407 mark, uh, somehow got a high sticking minor against somebody who must have... Must have been our small player he hit in the face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and was that one that was shorter than him? <laughs> was there somebody shorter than him? Yeah, yeah there, I think there was two of them on, the, on, their, on their team. Oh, yeah. And then uh, the questionable call was uh, at the 558 mark uh, with Matt Stoyer shooting the puck over the glass. Yeah, and it's... Questionable where he shot it from. Is it... it... Honestly, looked like he was on the right side of the red line when he shot it and when it did go out of the play, but he was in the right area where he was supposed to be at, but he wasn't trying to put it out. Yeah, he I, played I the puck in it. I, I didn't really get a good angle on the on the whole thing and the whole play, unfortunately. But so I'm not sure. That that game, there were, there it was a lot of questionable calls and. A lot of questioning the linesman's ability to <laughs> know, how to ice, how know, ice know how to call icing and offsides. Sides. Cause, um, there, there were, there the times where the guys were well offsides and he let the play resume. Yeah, so I, I guess a good question for you is um, what do you define as icing and offsides? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do I define as offsides? Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. oh, uh, I mean, the puck has to be in the zone before you. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah, but if. if, if, if Unless your name is Matt Duchesne. The player is way up where that puck, <laughs> and the puck comes in afterwards, and you let the play resume, that's well, well, well off sides. Well, yeah. There, <laughs> there, there, no there, there is a slight loophole that you, a player who has control of the puck can enter the zone before the puck as long as you're not touching the puck when you, when you enter the zone. because, it, Or at least that's a, rule, that's a loophole in the NHL because I've I was you can go in backwards, right? But have full possession of the puck. Yeah, it has to be like on t- on your tape, tape to tape. Like, mm-hmm. it has to be on your stick, right? For you, for that to count. Otherwise, and then the other one that we were talking about: how many times the puck hit the referee and stayed in play. Last time we played, we played in Columbus. They kept calling the outside. 
that it, it's considered offside and blow the whistle yeah. because, but they weren't calling it. I mean, that's, I mean, every referee has different judgments. So, you know, yeah. Everyone but they, interprets the rule differently. We might have seen something different than they did, so right. it's hard to say. Really but there, there are two say. icings, one, one that was called icing one that was called off. And the first one, I thought Prowler's player um, had tipped the puck on the, uh, on the opponent's side of the red, the center ice line. Um, and then there was one, I forget who shot down, but there was one that was clearly shot down by Port Huron that was uh, waved off. And no, yeah. It could have been because their defenseman stepped on the play, so when they do that, or if the goalie comes out of the crease. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if the defenseman steps on the guy who's making the play, like in their zone, they can throw the red line. Get him and, out. uh... Yeah, so that could be a reason they waved it off. All right. Yeah, good call, guys. Good and then uh, attendance for that game was 1,136. We just want to point out that uh, Friday, Dana got the prediction right from last week's show. And Saturday, I got it right from good last job. week's show. Well, what so, was the prediction? Uh, Dana predicted 3-2 Prowlers for Friday, and then I said 3 nothing for Saturday. Wow. First time ever. Nice. And it was back to back. <laughs> yeah, back to back. Yeah, we're, we're first time ever. <laughs> we're we're hit it back. That's we're crazy. terrible. <laughs> All right. <coughs> he can't make. He's got uh, three other kids. Uh, um, we'll be right back after these messages. Hey guys, it's Crystal from the Port Huron Prowlers. Back to you from behind the scenes. I'm with Mitz today, and Mitz and I are here to give you guys some um, examples of things the guys would like on the bus trip. Mitz, do you think the guys would like granola bars? What about fruit and vegetables? Okay, not vegetables, but how about fruit? Um, cases of water? What about some Powerade and Gatorade? Well, there you have it. Some true facts of what Mitz thinks our boys should have on the road trips. Thanks for watching and enjoy the show. At Big Boy, we've got lots of omelets all day, every day. Like the meaty meat lovers, savory southern, or hearty Denver. It's your Big Boy. Border City Paranormal is a professional paranormal team located in the Blue Water area. If you have any uneasy feelings, hear bumps in the night that cannot be explained, or hear rumors about your home or business, please give us a call. Totally believe in all that. Like, I, I do too. Stuff, so. But hey, that's <coughs> something that I love. So yeah, 
Hey, keep doing it. The giant mm-hmm. tower's on his way back. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, end of the episode without him. <laughs> All right, hit <laughs> But uh, welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Um, we still have a, a lot of stuff to go over, guys. Yeah, we got to get it going, though, because... Yeah. Um, we're going to go over the standings really quick. Welcome uh, back. If uh, Mike ever can get back here quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> so start us off, Mike, in the Eastern Division. <clears throat> okay, well, Danbury, uh, through 17 games, leads that division. They're 11, uh, 4, 0, oh, and 2. They're on a heater, 9 straight. Oh, they yeah. suck. <laughs> uh... And then uh, the owner-slash-commissioner's team, which he should either resign or sell the team. Uh, <laughs> yeah, have fun with that one, Don. <laughs> There's 11 and 6 through 17 games, and but they're on a four-game losing streak. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Mentor uh, uh, is on a two-game win streak because they just played Battle Creek. They're 11 and 7 through 18 games. Elmira, the other team we can't uh, rag on, apparently, <laughs> through 17 games is 7-7-2-1, seven, seven, and one, and they won their last game. And then Delaware is bringing up the bottom in that division at 3-13 and 13 through 16 games, and they are obviously on a one-game losing streak. Uh, and then uh, in the Western Division, Carolina through 17 games is 15-1-0-1, but it helps that they played Battle Creek a ton. <laughs> and they're, they're on a uh, one-game overtime losing streak. Danville, uh, through 18 games, is 10-8. and eight, And they're on a one-game win streak. Uh, Port Huron is uh, third at 7-6-2-0. And, and Port Huron's on a three-game win streak. And has the fewest pony minutes in the league. Believe that? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. We've been the most penalized over the last four years, so yeah, it's hard. But, Good discipline so far this year. It's yeah. been amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But they've also had, Port Huron's also had the fewest uh, power play opportunities too. Uh, I guess it works both ways. I mean, yeah. I guess we'd rather. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Just but, keep the uh, game going. You know, with our power play though, with right. Robo shot and you know Graham <laughs> Portillo in front of the net. It, and know, as it was pointed out to us by uh, one of our uh, co administrators on our Facebook uh, or face, Facebook <laughs> book page, Facebook group page, uh, Watertown has had the fewest penalties or minor penalties or shorthanded. Um, Can you get it right? Opportunity. <laughs> Has been shorthanded the least at 58, but they've Ooh. probably had a lot of offsetting. Oh, Watertown. 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 Yeah, they were they were pretty disciplined when we played the team, so I believe that. Yeah, and then uh, Columbus through 16 games is on a four-game losing streak. They're uh, five, nine, one, and one. And then Battle Creek's on 19. They haven't won a game all year, so they're on a 19-game losing streak. <laughs> all right, guys. Um. We have five games to actually make predictions for. Are you guys ready for this? Yep. First one is uh, tomorrow, I believe. What is it, 7, 7.30? 7.30 start time against Battle Creek. Oh, that'll be a 7-1 uh, to one victory for the Prowlers. Robert? 6-1 Prowlers. Nathan? 5, shout out. And do you want to make a prediction for your own team? <laughs> I say 5-1. Uh, I'm going for an 8-2. I'm, I'm going for it. So you also want uh, Graham and Robertson to uh, get a few points and lead the league after this game. Exactly. And then obviously we want... And I, I, I'll go with the prediction that somebody else said the one night. I'm still, my 5 nothing. still, but he's going to get the empty netter. <laughs> I'm gonna get no, the that... Netter. that that was a 3 2 empty net, netter. <laughs> <laughs> it was, that was a, it's a joke. It's a joke. I was, was going to say, why are they pulling a goalie with 5 0? Five, five, right. <laughs> because somebody said a, a 3 2 empty like, oh, netter. Oh, okay. Um, hey, I'll, I'll take whatever I can get. 
I'll take it. Um, Alan scores two of the goals, and Graham and Robertson and Portillo score the rest. I do actually want to go over this one question before we forget about it. It's um, who is a team or player that you look forward to playing against? Oh, I, I have a bunch of buddies throughout the league, um, but uh, a friend that I played with, Jarrett and I, Stavros Soilis at Indiana Tech, won with us. You know, he plays for Battle Creek. So uh, it's going to be a fun <coughs> play. I'm excited playing against him. And, you know, I have played with Cameron Dimmon in Watertown. That's always fun. And, you know, Shea Carey on Battle Creek. And, you know, I played AAA with Ryan Marker in Delaware, so it'll be fun playing against him. It's really just, you know, you get to know, you know, know all these guys. It's, you know, it's fun, fun playing against your buddies. And, and just a final reminder, if you hurry up and get to Big Boy in Fort Gratiot, we do have three tickets for tomorrow's game. So uh, hurry up. Hmm. Uh, Friday, yeah. December 20th, um, 8.05 p.m. at Danville. Predictions. 3-2. Port Hero. 2-1 uh, us over time. <laughs> Sit, He's Dane, bringing out the claws over there. Danon said the same, was thinking the same thing as you, Robert. No. I'm going to say 3-2 uh, re- um, regulation. Win. So, either we're both going to be right or we're both going to be wrong. <laughs> uh. Oh, sorry, 3-2 overtime. Well, the or last three, co- three, two empty netter. <laughs> the last couple games we played, Densville was really close. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah so, I'm not saying that's why I said 3-2, but I'm just, I think it's going to be regulation. So, um, Alex, Friday night's game. Um, 4-1. Chris, home. Friday night's game. 2 nothing shutout. Sorry. For Prowlers, obviously. Oh, that means. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Chris and uh, Corey, because he predicted a shutout's not going to happen. That's, yeah, come oh, on. Oh, wait. Man. I didn't want to say it, but since you said it, that's bad juju, boys. You can't, it's just like you can't say it during the game. Oh, you can't predict you, it. You, wow. You can't. You, but, hey, you I, can say even, it. With, even with you guys predicting it, you know, it's possible. Well, our goals yeah. are phenomenal. You, know, you, you, you can say 3 yeah, nothing, yeah, but you goals. can't say 3 nothing shutout. How is he doing that's after that Friday night game? Oh, uh, Corey? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's still good. He's getting better. You know, he was feeling better on Saturday. and We had practice today. He was looking good. Yeah. Did he really throw up Friday? Yeah. Yeah, they caught it right on camera, too, of course. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you. Well, I saw him go into the uh, back and lean over. but. Yeah. Also, if you can't catch or if you can't make tomorrow night's game, you can always watch it on ebw.tv. All right, Saturday night's right. game. Saturday again, again against Danville. Uh, we'll 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 go four two with an empty net goal f- for uh, from Alex here. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> well, Serena already predicted oh, a hat trick for you. So <laughs> yeah, I haven't had a hat trick since Double A. <laughs> so we'll see. Oh. Knock on wood. Saturday's game Saturday. Uh, one nothing. Overtime? No. Nope. Shootout? No. Nope. <laughs> I like it. I'm going to say 4 2. Again, Dayton, we're either both going to be right or both going to be yeah. wrong. What did, you, what did you say? 4 2. 4 2. <coughs> That's a good line. I'm going to say 5 2 because we're, we're scoring a lot lately. Uh, I'm, other than the last game, but we're scoring a lot. I'm going for the uh, majority 4 2. I'm sorry, I have to um, make you a little bit more mad. Okay, mm-hmm. then. Uh, I know normally we don't, we all have different scores, but some of these games, it, it just you, right. you're used to watching how we play against certain teams. And, yeah. And Chris, all, it's, Chris still said four three us. Mm-hmm. Of course you did. <laughs> and then uh, the other two predictions are December 27th and 28th against Mentor. So Friday, Friday the uh, 27th. What's your um, what's your prediction? Uh, I say the last couple of games we've been playing them have been really close too. I'm gonna say five four us regulation. Dana? Uh, yeah, they've been kind of a thorn in our heel. Um, 
I'll say three two. Three two. Uh, I'm gonna go four two. Chris. Two to one. They just traded their. Uh, yeah. Uh, Moscow and Von Faust in the club. But they got Yuri Petesca. So that's a that's a big addition for Mentor. Mm. Okay. Uh, and looking at the transactions, Party Hunt hasn't had one since Joe's come back from suspension. All right. <laughs> uh, I'll go 5 3. Can we get David Dippard after that? Uh, maybe it was a Nippard trade. Yeah. Either yeah, way, it yeah, hasn't been much. We haven't had done too much trading. No, no, we, have a, we have a we have a really good to. group of guys. Yes, yeah. we haven't needed to though. Yeah, you know, we're we're deep. Where did um, Nipper came from? Uh, he played. He was. Uh, he got trade from Carolina. Oh, okay. Yeah, then he was in Peoria in the Southern Professional before mm-hmm. that. Okay. And then he played overseas in New Zealand and we're France. All the way back in two, that must have been an interesting nope. experience. Yeah, Saturday's you. Game. Uh, whenever nope, you get him out here, Nipper be fun was to talk before about. Pace's mm-hmm. suspension. Oh, really? Was up. Yeah. Because oh. the last transactions. Um, eleven seventeen. Joe returned from suspension. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a new friend, Yanni. <laughs> That's uh, Saturday's so game then. I'll, I'll also say uh, five three for that one. Four two last. <laughs> Dayton. I'm gonna do do agree do. with Rob four two. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Chris, I say two one, just just because those games are exciting. The funny thing is, I was gonna say two one too. <laughs> I'm trying to be different. <laughs> just, yeah, just to say a different number, I haven't said before. Say eight seven. <laughs> eight to seven. Uh, 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 what in your right mind thinks one of these games is gonna be eight to seven? Eight. Battle Creek. <laughs> no, they, uh, they, uh, we played Watertown last year, last game at home, nine seven. Right. Yeah, we lost. How about the Sinclair Shores game the last one we played yeah. against was 12 to 5? Well, there, there was a game yeah. in the OHL. What game like, was it last year that the goalie actually left the net? Oh, yeah, he physically took himself out of the game. After seven goals, he took himself out of the game and went sat down. Was that? Yeah. Was that, was that, <laughs> that was Mentor. Mentor. Yeah. No, it wasn't uh, the bench. He, he physically took himself out. Yeah, no, he the, the coach wasn't going to pull him, so he pulled himself. After the. Like, see ya. Once five goals went and he just. You see, he can start moving towards the bench, and the coach, like, six one win, he moved towards the bench again. Coach, after that seventh win, he just went and sat down. <laughs> yeah. Yep, he was done for the night. Um, let, let's wrangle it in, guys, because there is actually something really serious we need to go over tonight. Yes. Um, tonight, as you guys see in tonight's episode name, he put Epilepsy Night. Um... There's a video that I actually want to play before we get into this really quick. <laughs> Why, well, you don't want me to spill your drink again? <laughs> you know, get out of the way this time. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, th- one of the reasons why I bring up tonight is because you've all heard of the um, bad accident between Battle Creek and Carolina. Where it's um, the guy, where the Rumble Bee almost paralyzed the Carolina person against the boards. So I'm going to play that incident right now. It's nasty. Yeah. This is the one we talked about last week, right? Yeah. Well, my like brother. Said, we were talking about, I, I've been disabled all, oh. all pretty much. 
was not very allowed to play these sports, but go ahead. I can talk about that. <laughs> um, but that's one of the main reasons why I bring up tonight, as hits like that are unacceptable in the game. Yeah, I mean, you never want to see anybody get hurt. Um, Wait, when was that hit again? Uh, Two weeks ago? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And it's, um, well, I, oh, as a guy, I've been on the giving and receiving end of that. And unfortunately, you never want to see it. You know, it's mm. unfortunate. And there's no room for the you know, in the game for hits like that, but you want guys to battle and you guys want to go hard, and it's just tough seeing, you know, things end up like that. So. Mm -hmm. And, um, especially, it, it brings a lot of neuro damage to you guys, and I, that that's why I bring up the episode to you, especially since I, right at the start of the season, I lost one of my most dearest friends. Um, his name is Greg. And he's literally the main reason I actually started the show back off. Oh, God, he was, he was one of the funniest guys yeah. ever. And it's, he, if you saw him around the, he's, he brought the joy to anybody around the arena. He played hockey, he lived hockey. It's, he was a Bruins fan himself, and he grew up, he, Started off in Massachusetts. He loved the, anything over there. Um, how the heck did the guy only get one game him. for that hit? <clears throat> Thank you. But this guy, it, he wanted to be on the show. It's, he got me to do this show, and not even two episodes in, he's left this earth. And it's, it's hard. And it's like, I, I know I brought it up to you, David. It's like, I thought about it just like, Quitting and breaking down. And I told you no, we need to, yeah. Yeah, you, gotta, you know, he yeah. definitely, I'm sure he He'd definitely you appreciates that you're doing he it. He wouldn't want yeah. you to quit. Exactly. We appreciate it. So that's why I told you no, it's, we can work through this. You mm -hmm. know, let's right. keep. That, that one was, was a shock when I saw that, what his mom had posted on Facebook. Yeah. It was like, it was like, what can you say? Um, it's just sad that it, those kind of hits that we saw in the earlier video um, can result in that kind of injury. Mm -hmm. And he he lived with it all his life, though, unfortunately. And he was only 28. Yeah. And the stuff can, unfortunately, get the best of us. Yeah. Um, um, definitely just something to be aware about and you know, spread awareness and, and uh, you know, for all those epilepsy, you know, victims, I guess, I don't say it lightly, but uh, not sure the better words to put it, but it's definitely good that you brought this up because we need to be aware of it. Exactly, and it's, um, especially with the kind of hits that we have nowadays, it's, it's you know, like guys are getting bigger, faster, stronger, you know, hits are getting, you know, yeah. but we're also learning how to how to hit cleaner. So in the process of all these, you know, hits, you know, we're also changing the game and, you know, affect changing rules and us us players are learning how to, you know, take better control of our bodies and to avoid hit situations like that. Exactly. And that's a good thing that we have the advancement in the game. But you also have to be aware of where you're also hitting though too on the other hand. Yeah. So well that the hit we saw that was intentional and what's stupid Sorry, sorry to kind of go back to the. What's stupid is the, the guy who threw the hit only got a game suspension for yeah. the fight. And the guy yeah. that got the injured guy, is... The guy who fought also got a game suspension. Mm -hmm. That That's a terrible decision by this thing. Yeah. A absolutely ridiculous. Um, um, Crystal said something. He, she says, don't ever drop your head when you, you're going getting hit. I tell that to all the athletes, which is a good thing to um, do because it's not only just the hitters at fall. It's, you have to be aware of all your surroundings. I too, mean, we, so. we saw, yeah. we saw it in, uh, with Ryan Shazier a couple of years ago um, in the NFL where he dropped his head and he... Vertebrae got compressed. Yeah. yeah. He so, basically paralyzed himself. Uh, luckily, he's 
with the rehab, he's walking again, but you got to keep your head up when you hit. All right. All right. Yeah. And, um, thank you for listening to my rant, guys. It's <laughs> what <laughs> rant? It wasn't a rant. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yes. A, a, a rant is when you're mad about something. <laughs> but, um, thank you, guys. Um, we're Tonight, we're going to end off the show a little bit differently. We're going to show you two videos that you can expect to see from the NRHL. So, Merry Christmas, guys, and thank Merry you so Christmas, much. Everybody. See you tomorrow. Uh, reminder, our next show is a three-hour marathon on New Year's three Eve. Hours. Right. Um, so. so, we won't be having one next week for obvious reasons. Enjoy the time with your family. Yep. Merry Christmas. and. To those who don't tune into the show on the 31st, Happy New Year. Yep. Right, And it um, starts at 5 p.m. on the 31st. Remember, 5 p.m., not 7 p.m. See you guys later. <laughs>